So one of the problems of leaving the boat so long, uh, we've had a few issues when we got back to the boat and one of them was I couldn't seem to get the instruments working. The instruments would come on but they weren't showing the depth and the speed. So the, obviously the little display boxes were working but there must be something wrong with the sensors. And then I realized perhaps it was something at the masthead, like you get a lot of lightning around here, so perhaps there's a problem with that. So I've just gone online to the Raymarine site. I put a post up yesterday to ask about uh, what we could do to test, because I have a feeling this little box, the ITC is at the bottom of the mast, I have a feeling this little box might, have, um, might be not working properly because it doesn't have all the LEDs on that it normally does. And I can do some tests and I sent a note in and he sent back some suggestions, so I'm just checking those with the voltmeter to see what's going on. You can read the voltage from the top of the mast off in here. Okay, so I've got some numbers back. I'll send this stuff back in. What voltages I've got, I can send them back. And then they're supposed to respond in uh, a few days, uh, but they seem to be pretty quick already. So. Okay. All right, he's responding in just a few minutes. These guys are amazing, so. All right, masthead is definitely bad lightning strike or other significant voltage event likely. So I did wonder about that. Our AIS stopped transmitting in May. We thought maybe uh, the batteries had got down or something, which we did have a battery problem, but maybe it was a lightning strike. So there we go, we'll get some bits. Go up to the mast and take a look at the antenna and uh, bring down the wind indicator and see if anything shows any problems up there. So today we're off up the mast to take a check out what's going on up there. I think we had some kind of a lightning event, perhaps nearby, not an exact strike, but a close-up strike. Because there's done more testing on this and we have, it looks like perhaps the AIS antenna got damaged. Also the masthead sender for the wind has got uh, no longer sending a signal. So that's caused some problems with the main uh, Raymarine bus the SeaTalk NG bus we've got, so we'll go up and take a look at that. Looks like a good day for it if these clouds don't come up and we can bring down the pieces and see what they look like. Okay, I got a safety line on, that's rigged uh, from the front of the mast around and I've got this line on here which we have for an electric wind so we can go up on that and then have the safety line. Yep, ready to go. Ready? First spreaders. Okay, from two thirds of the way up, got a beautiful view of the super yachts out at anchor. Our marina here, Cheryl's just bringing up the safety line. We're looking for any sign of lightning damage up here. Lightning doesn't need to actually strike a boat to cause damage. A lightning strike has a very high voltage with an extremely high current. This will create a corresponding instantaneous magnetic field. This is called an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, and it will pass the boat and affect wires and components even though the boat hasn't been actually struck by lightning. The magnetic pulse will induce current to flow in wires and components which it passes through, especially components like the antennas at our masthead. Note the aluminum mast itself shields all the wires inside it from the pulse. So Paul is up the mast. I've been using the topping lift to haul him up. And we have a second halyard on a harness that I've also been running up to pull up uh, so that if his main line breaks, he has another line to hold him and he's in a harness. Uh, we're double locked with the jam cleat and also with the lock on the winch, self-tailing winch. And these are Lumar winches. We've used them on all our boats and always trust them very reliably. Okay, made it to the top. This is 72 feet above the water at low tide. So you can take a look up here. We've got, this is the VHF antenna. 
as part of this Windex and it's working fine. This is the anchor light, which is interesting. The anchor light looks like it's full of water. So this is the VHF antenna and this is the AIS. It's got its own separate antenna out on this little wing that keeps it away from uh, the other antenna. So this is the one that's quit working. It's marginally higher than the other one. I don't know why one quit. And then the wind speed indicator is this guy. And uh, that's not working either. I mean, obviously it's spinning. It hasn't been damaged by a bird or anything, but it isn't working. So it's not sending an electrical signal. So I'll bring that down too. I should be able to just undo this. If I can loosen this collar. Yep. So that'll be easy. So this is a clever system. Just loosen the collar and bring it down. And then this guy is a little more tricky. They've put it together with a, a cover over the uh, the joiner here. So obviously if I can cut this away, then I should be able to unplug this and then take it off the mast here and bring it down for a check and replacement. There's my warning that I don't have all day to do this. It's raining over the other side of Panama. So I gotta get done and get down fairly quick before the rain comes and perhaps lightning again. Okay, so I just have to take this connecting cover off here. So let's put a nice waterproof cover over the splice between this wire. I'm feeling little drops of rain already. way to do it actually, a little joiner. Yeah, this all looks good. So, it's knife away before I cut myself. So the idea is to take this antenna down and test it. Although, I mean, it obviously doesn't work. Okay, the easy one. This guy should just straight out. Yeah, looks fine. Time for a drink. Are these even in the shot? Probably not. Probably not. They're blowing away anyway. It's a windy day here in Shelter Bay. It's been a very exciting year. Yes, a very unusual <laughs> holiday season for us this year. But Here's we to 2021. Wish you all the best for 2021. <laughs> Gotta hold these umbrellas in. Yep. Mmm. Super mm, good. Pina coladas. Yeah, so we are in Panama. We, well, the boat has been here uh, since February of 2020. And then we flew home and got locked out for the pandemic. So we've just been back a couple of months, celebrated Christmas and New Year in quarantine. Ah, yeah. Uh, we were restricted to the boat in a marina with just local boats in it. So we had the place to ourselves for both those weekends. Because we had a lot of time on our hands, we started reminiscing about all the different places that we've been for Christmas and New Year's over the years with the boat. Yeah. And we thought today we would show you some of the highlights of those uh, holiday seasons. Yeah. And we're so lucky because we've got to experience so many different traditions and cultures and ways of celebrating the holidays. That's the great thing about sailing. You can visit and take advantage of all those different opportunities to meet different people and see different places. Yeah. Antigua was one of our most fun Christmases ever. We were tied up in front of Nelson's Dockyard. And Antigua is a really great place to go for a cruise not just a destination, because it's an actual cruising ground in itself. There's mm -hmm. so many little anchorages and bays and beaches and 
it's a great spot for a cruise and a really fun Christmas we had there. Yeah, I think it's one of our most memorable because it's in Nelson's Dockyard in English Harbour. It's, it's so historic to be in those dockyards and it's not just sailors, uh, locals come down, expats that spend their winters yeah. there. So it's such a great community and a really fun party. Antigua has one of the best Christmas parties with visitors from around the world. We have a house here. We live here? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, not year round, but we live here six okay, months out of the year. So you know that it's a good party down here? I know it every year, so yes, that's right. right <laughs> Another memorable Christmas with a nautical theme was in St. Lucia after oh, yeah. our Atlantic crossing with the ARC, the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. And we'd been at sea for two weeks. And so when everyone got in, over 200 boats, everyone was ready to party. And the local yacht club there hosts a light parade with all the boats. And it was just so much fun. Yeah. It's Christmas Eve in St. Lucia and we are celebrating boater style. spent every Christmas in the Caribbean. In fact, in 2007, we sailed from the UK and made landfall in Madeira, and it was spectacular. In early December, a night landfall in the city of Funchal with all the Christmas lights. It was just beautiful. Heading on to the Canary Islands, we would get there before Christmas, but we were not going to really leave until after Christmas. Mm. And that's definitely an option. You don't have to go as early as the Ark leaves. The Ark basically leaves as early as you can safely leave mm -hmm. to cross the Atlantic and get to the Caribbean after hurricane finishes. Right, so it's the end of November, yep. and it means that you arrive in St. Lucia before Christmas, and then you have all winter to cruise the Caribbean. Yeah, that's the Ark strategy to maximize your Caribbean mm -hmm. sailing. Um, alternatively, you can quite safely wait until after Christmas if you want to spend Christmas at home or in Europe mm -hmm. and then head across the Atlantic afterwards. So that's what we did and mm -hmm. actually had New Year's at sea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Cheers. <laughs> I got ten, <laughs> one, eight, eight, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New Year! Year. Happy, New Year. Happy New Year! Happy New Last year we were down in the Bahamas mm -hmm. and uh, really enjoyed a Christmas there. That was very nice. Christmas and New Year's. Uh, and yeah. if you followed us, you know that Bahamas are one of our favorite destinations. And then following that um, was New Year's where they have a really special celebration called oh, yeah. Junkanoo, where the local people work all year building these beautiful floats and yeah. costumes. And it's just magnificent. Oh my gosh, it's 
so much fun. It's just great. Everybody knows each other here and the sailors are included and the costumes were beautiful. The night was perfect. Wow, best junk canoe ever. Oh, so that was such a fun evening. Again, you know, lots of sailors, lots of local people and travelers, and just such a passionate uh, celebration for the holidays. Uh, in contrast to that, New Year's Eve was very quiet, but natural and fun. Uh, we were on Stocking Island with some cruising friends, built a bonfire, and yeah. brought in 2020 with great expectations. Oh yeah, 2020, the year of clear vision. Boy, did we get that <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Sounds like we're counting down. We are. Okay. Cruiser's midnight. Everybody, Cruiser's yeah. midnight, nine o'clock. We are going to bring in the new year, 2020. 2020, 2020 the year of vision. The year of clear vision. Like 2020 vision, get it? Uh, I got it. Great. <laughs> Eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Oh my gosh, yes, who could predict what uh, this year will bring? But hey everyone, here's to 2021. We got through the last year yeah. and we're all looking forward to another great year, a positive year this year. Yeah. So please in the comments below, tell us about your plans. What is it yeah. you're hoping to achieve or where you're hoping to sail in this brand new year? Thank you for your support. Uh, if there's anything we can do to help you fulfill your dreams of getting out on the water, we're here for you. Thanks. Cheers and Happy, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year.